Uh, so first of all, the title of my presentation in the schedule on the website is a bit misleading uh, because uh, Rodri has had to make it up to make it up really quickly uh, since I needed it for the German embassy because uh, the story of me coming here is very complicated because of the visa thing and uh, the German embassy first declined the visa for me for because some small paper was missing so I had to apply uh, for the second time and in the end I got my passport uh, with the visa in it just four hours before my flight was about to departure so I, I went to the embassy to the German embassy and then I uh, drove uh, straightly to the to the airport um, uh, in fact uh, what I am going to um, uh, to tell you about uh, is uh, how uh, we at Bitwise Works uh, port uh, software to OS2. Uh, I think that uh, this is quite important uh, to give you some uh, overview of uh, how we do our job uh, so that you and all other contributors know what they are actually paying for. Uh, this is what uh, I will be talking about. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, just a few words about me. Uh, I'm a full-time OS2 software developer since uh, 2003, so it's 15 years now, quite a bit. I'm a co-founder of uh, Bitwise Work and its main contractor since 2012. Uh, I worked for Netlabs Org since uh, a long time ago. I uh, did a lot of things together with Adrian, and it all started with the Qt3 uh, port, as far as I remember. And I also worked at Innotech uh, from 2004 till uh, 2008, uh, where, where I uh, was part of the virtual box team. I was developing the uh, graphical user interface uh, and uh, some other uh, parts, including uh, uh, a company which is called Main, which glues all things together in VirtualBox. Um, and uh, after the tech, I started to work in, uh, for Sylvan, and then we uh, started our, our own company. Okay, next slide. <coughs> uh, I was born today, 41 uh, years ago. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. <laughs> And I live in a village in Moscow, near Moscow, uh, in Russia. And these are uh, some pictures of my workplace so that you would ha have some visual uh, imagination of how it's going on. This is my workplace. And uh, as far as you can see, there are several uh, monitors and uh, a couple of computers. This is my, uh, to the left is my, uh, to the right is my OS2 machine, this one. And I actually code on my Mac machine. Uh, there are several reasons for that. Uh, first of all, I write most of the code in uh, Qt Creator. Qt Cre Creator is a, a GUI application for developing software from the Qt company. And the thing is that uh, since we still have Qt 4 for OS2, the version of Qt Creator, which is available uh, for OS2, is a bit outdated and the current version of Qt Creator is much more powerful and it's very convenient if you develop such <coughs> complex software as uh, Firefox or something like that, uh, where you have thousands of source files, uh, tens of thousands of classes, C++ classes, and so on and so on. And another reason why it is uh, more convenient to work like that, because my OS2 machine has to be rebooted very frequently and it crashes from time to time, it hangs during the development process and it's very inconvenient to code, uh, to write code on the same machine w where you are actually running it. Yeah, so this is why I have uh, such a setup and I can actually, I use C S, uh, SSH, uh, the SSH protocol to connect to my OS2 machine so I can actually run the compiler on the OS2 machine and get its output on my Mac machine where I see all the errors and I ca can even jump directly to the source where the error is and this is very convenient, this is how it looks. This is. Uh, look from this window so it's basically the countryside and uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. It's uh, very good for work like that because you work hard typing, then you can go and have some walk and uh, some fresh air and it's all refreshing. And I have some uh, business to do in my garden because of the, all this grass and some trees and whatever. So it's also a good thing to, uh, to have some break after coding very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, uh, so what, uh, what did I do for OS2? This is a brief list. I ported Qt3 to OS2, then I ported Qt4, uh, then uh, I also ported uh, OpenGDK uh, version 6 to OS2, and uh, uh, also I contributed in, uh, in a lot of other projects, which includes Odin, uh, which includes OS2 versions of many applications like Adobe Flash, uh, LibC, GCC, Python, RPM, and, uh, and a lot of other uh, small utilities and big libraries and uh, so on. And the other big project I have been working on is uh, Firefox. I, I picked it up in uh, 2013 and uh, w when it was at version 17 and I have been working on it till now uh, the current version we re released just a week ago is uh, version 49.45.9.0 uh, 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 general availability number two so this is the current release of Firefox um, for OS2 and it actually works quite well nowadays compared to our previous versions uh, and we solved a lot of problems so it's quite usable okay next slide please uh, so uh, uh, what is needed to create or port software in general uh, you of course you need a hardware a machine a computer that can run the operating system you are targeting for you need the documentation that comes with the operating system de describing you all the internal stuff. You need programming tools like the compiler, like the library, uh, libraries, like the linker, and so on and so on. Make tools and other, and other things. And of course, as I already mentioned, you need software libraries doing various things uh, which your application needs in order to implement its functionality. And of course, you need some knowledge uh, uh, to, uh, you need to know how to put all these things together. Okay, uh, so uh, how, how other developers do it on their platforms? You basically get any modern computer, which you can buy uh, in a store next door, you install an operating system of your choice on it. You install all the programming uh, tools which are usually come with the operating system or can be downloaded from the vendor site. And it includes all the documentation. And uh, then you decide which libraries are necessary for your software. You go to the websites dedicated to these libraries. You pick up a version for your operating system you take this version, you put it into your development environment, and then you can basically start developing your own software or porting the application you are going to port. Steps one to three take like a day or several hours or something like that. And uh, the most part of your work goes to step number four, where you actually uh, write code, create, implement your ideas or uh, port some somebody else's ideas to the operating system of your choice. And besides that, you get a lot of support from the community because uh, modern uh, current operating systems have uh, big communities where you can always uh, come and ask for help. And there are also support forums uh, supported by the vendors of the operating system, uh, operating systems, the vendors of the software and the vendors of the libraries, where you can also ask questions and get some answer. This is how it's done on other platforms. Uh, now let's uh, have a look at how it's done on OS2. Uh, first of all, you need a specific machine 
in order to install OS2 on it in the first place, not any uh, machine will uh, suit uh, here. And even if you find a machine that can boot OS2, there may still be some problems in some areas. For example, it's very common that the Wi-Fi connectivity will not work because there are just a few uh, chips, uh, Wi-Fi chips that are supported on OS2 uh, nowadays. And it's really hard to find a computer where you will have a working Wi-Fi uh, combination in some way. Also, uh, it's very typical that you, have, you will have audio problems. For example, my, uh, my current machine cannot make a single sound uh, for not very known reasons. And uh, so if I need to, uh, f uh, let's uh, say, debug uh, sound problems in Firefox when you play YouTube, I simply... Uh, well, you, you, sometimes you are lucky, but uh, as uh, Sylvan mentioned yesterday, we have uh, like 300 uh, libraries and tools ported nowadays, and uh, among them, I think only 10 persons were in, in some or another form ported to OS2, OS2 some many years ago. So you, had, you still had to update these ports to make them usable in the modern software. So. Uh, and only after that, only when you find a working machine, only when you uh, uh, find uh, all the necessary tools and actually make them work, port them themselves, which is, which, uh, is often a project of its own. I mean, if it's something like GCC, uh, this is the C++ C and C++ compiler, <coughs> which is needed to uh, compile C++-based uh, projects. It's, it's uh, quite huge and it's a project of its own and it may take a lot of time to get a usable OS2 version of this tool. And the same <coughs> thing applies to many other things like the libraries, like the tools used in the Linux world uh, to develop software like AuthoConfig, like AuthoMake uh, and many like LibTool and many other things and like Python, like Perl like the POSIX shell interpreter and so on and so on. And uh, all of them need a lot of, usually need a lot of attention to have a usable OS2 version. This is, a, uh, this is another so showstopper. So only when you uh, have completed all these tasks, you can start actually doing what you were going to do in the first place, uh, porting the software you wanted to port or writing is from scratch. And these steps, uh, two and three, as I said, uh, may turn uh, to be projects on their own and uh, of their own and take a lot of time to get them done. And th this explains why uh, everything you do for OS2 nowadays takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of uh, man hour resources. This is uh, clear explanation. And in addition to that, you will not get any support from uh, software vendors. Well, you might, you might be lucky and they may give you some insight of what is going on in, inside their software to help you to port it to, to OS2 or something like that, but it's not very common. Usually you will get no support from them and of course our community is also uh, too small so you basically have to dig it all out for yourself, by yourself. And this also requires time. You basically need to use the try and error, uh, error approach where you try things out, see how they work and uh, dig deeper, try it again, see how it works. And you have to repeat it uh, over and over again to understand how uh, some API in the OS2 kernel works at all, because you only have some basic documentation to that and this documentation is often outdated uh, as well yes and there are some functions that uh, have been never documented uh, documented by IBM so you have to figure that out out of the thin air how it works so this is uh, another problem and this uh, explains why it's uh, been taking lo so long to develop any software on OS2 the next slide please uh, before this next slide, I want to uh, invite Sylvan, 
my colleague to show you some more internals of how we work at B uh, at Bitwise. Still on already expl explained yesterday uh, why we moved uh, to GitHub because it's uh, it's it has uh, much more features than uh, than SVN and, uh, which we need a lot. So it's much it's much easier for us to uh, put it all together using. Uh, Git than SVN, and we uh, have been moving all our projects to uh, GitHub recently, and we have quite a bit of them already. And Simon will just give you an overview on how it looks. You you will see the complete GitHub here, so. Uh, Let's, let's go to the QT5 project <coughs> to show you a couple of things. I will tell a bit more later about, about uh, QT5. Here we start to do projects within it, so you see completely what we do, what parts. Here are a couple of um, points we, we work on. <coughs> you see that the first part, point one, point one, we already started. So if you go to our GitHub, look at the projects, you will see also how far we are, or how far we think we are. Late, later on, when everything is done and, and the port is out, you really have to go to the issue. If you find some issue, you have to go there and fill it in. No issue means there is no bug. And no bug means there is no fix for it, yeah. usually. Yeah, so uh, this, uh, our uh, Bitwise Works GitHub page is uh, the source of information for you. You should check it uh, from time to time to uh, see what's going on and which projects we are working on. And you can also uh, file bug reports there and you can also download new versions there. You can uh, uh, look at our progress and so on and so on. So just uh, put, it, put this uh, page into your bookmarks and visit it from time to time if you want to know what we are working on. And Kit is, uh, QT5 is now the first pro uh, project we work with sub-projects. We never did that before, but now we started because it's a huge project, it's not that easy to follow. Know and see where we are yeah QT5 has grown really big compared to QT4 you also see of course if you go to, to the main part of the, of the, of the github for, from the project you can always look at the check-ins and comments with it if you are interested what, what's going on so everything I do, everything Sylvan does, every, everything, everything anybody else does uh, goes uh, into th basically into this uh, repository uh, as a commit. So you can always see who did what and what's the progress, <coughs> uh, uh, what, uh, what amounts of work we do and so on. It's really easy for you to, uh, uh, to see what we are currently doing or have been doing or already did. <coughs> just interested of, of, about statistics, if you can go to the inside and you see a bit of statistics what's going on there. So you see some, some there was something was pushed, some commits. Yeah, we started working on QT5 finally just a few days ago and you can see some activity so of this work. Uh, no, no, not yet. Well, we, uh, uh, b the thing is that you don't have a variety of things uh, for OS2, so uh, there is just one version w which we can uh, which we can support, uh, and the, it's the one that uh, which you have in the RPM repository. So you basically take the current uh, version of each tool, and you will be good starting doing some things on OS2 and I will uh, use just the same set of the tools uh, for QT5. But again, I, I, might, I may find out at some point that I need a newer version of some tool, a newer version of some library, and I will have to stop 
my Qt5 activity and switch to this new uh, version of the tool or the new version of the library and po port it first. And it may distract my attention for like uh, from the main project for a month, for a few weeks, for a month, even for several months. Uh, uh, giving the delay in the main uh, uh, in the main work, so yeah, this happens all the time. Do you have to do many workarounds because there is no real solution? Of course, I have to. Of, of course, and you have to figure them out uh, how to better work around uh, this problem or this problem. On, and of course, it also takes time because again, there is no one you can uh, go and ask for help nowadays, at least. So everything is, uh, well, uh, you have to do on your own. Of course, some people help and there is actually uh, some good support from the community in the uh, field of testing what we do. Some people write really good bug reports and this usually helps a lot. And so please, if you find something non not working, please uh, uh, take uh, spend some time and uh, file a bug report uh, um, and the page dedicated to the project you find it in and this will really help <coughs> also try to uh, when you file a bug report please try to uh, watch it so that if a developer asks you to do some else something else some uh, some other test Please try to do it and, prov and provide the results of this test back to the developer. It's, this communication between the developer and the actual user is very, very important. And given that we don't have a huge community, uh, each of you may um, help a lot if you do it. If you try what we create, if you try to run it, if you try to test it, and if you report problems uh, that happen in your case on your machine in your environment then that may help a lot because of course we cannot uh, test uh, what we do on all uh, machines that are out there a developer m can make it work on his own machine but for some reason it may not work on other person's machine and we need a report from this other person in order to fix it of course Yes, of course. Yes, of course. The, the GitHub uh, website uh, will send you a notification uh, as long as uh, a ticket you create will, uh, gets any update or gets uh, resolved or gets closed or something like that. You just need to provide your valid email when you register at GitHub and then you, you're good to go. You will get all these uh, notifications in your email box. It's very convenient actually, much uh, better than with the other systems. For example, um, uh, we, well, mo most of, of our projects are still at NetLabs and there is a problem with notifications at NetLabs, which is non-fixable. Uh, there are reasons w why it's not fixable, but uh, still you, you have to look at the tickets uh, 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 by yourself because you will uh, not get a notification unless you specifically put put your email address in each ticket you create of course this is not very convenient and uh, so you don't always get notifications from uh, our svn repositories at netlabs but uh, github is better in this regard because it's a commercial project which is supported by a large team of programmers and they uh, make a good work here providing all this infrastructure which we can use as well Uh, yes, that's another problem actually. Uh, for some reason, uh, people prefer to post uh, their complaints to the forums rather than uh, go to our uh, project site and, and uh, file a bug report. And it's a problem as well because I, I don't uh, uh, read forums that much for obvious reasons. I simply have no time for that. It's, uh, well, I, all my time is consumed by the OS2 work. As, uh, I can repeat, I am a full time. Uh, always to developer and well uh, I don't want to spend the money you give us to read these forums these flame wars and whatever uh, 
Uh, yes, and uh, this, uh, this is why I, I'm, um, I'm repeating that please file bug reports at our project's uh, web pages, not uh, on the forums, because they, uh, the, the chances are little that they will reach me if you uh, post uh, uh, th something at the forum. Yeah. Doing a posting in the OS2 forums is great if you want to have a, a, a water cooler discussion or a nice chat with you. Yeah, if it, or if I have some popcorn and free time, I can uh, go to the forums and <laughs> enjoy user, it. For a user, forums are useful to find out if you've done something really stupid. <laughs> and you yeah, know. That, that's true, but, it, and but you get as, that as, then as then soon as you found, found out it's not stupid, then you file here. You have to so it's a good filter. Yes, yes. Uh, to some extent, yeah, it can work this, this way. So if it uh, eventually in, ends up in an uh, issue on our website, it's perfectly well. I mean, uh, if you want, discuss it uh, on the forums first. But then just, uh, just uh, fill uh, bug reports so that, that I could notice it. And we could have a conversation uh, within this system where you don't flame and stuff like that. It's much better for me to, uh, to understand what's going on, to g get some feedback from you, to give some feedback to you, and to exchange the information. It's much better to do it here. So please don't hesitate to open bug reports and follow them. I get the feeling that more than 50% of the users don't open a ticket. They just do a form posting and that's it. 50%? I think it's like 80%. Yeah. Yes. It's there are just a few people uh, that uh, create uh, uh, bug reports on a regular basis. Just two or three or something like that. And we have like a hundred uh, active users, uh, or a couple of hundreds in the community and only two, three uh, four of them um, create <laughs> bug reports. This is not what uh, we would like to see because it makes the uh, communication is re uh, that it makes it really hard to understand what's going on in the user's machines. And then some people in the forums in turn complain that the software is bugged. Yes, yes. This it's, it's a dead end, of course, if you, if it's done. Wounds. Yeah, right. Uh, normally, ninety percent of issues are crossed between chair and keyboard. <laughs> yeah, so before, uh, of course. Ticket, I, I want to be sure that it, it really yeah, yeah, we just discussed that. that. So the forum, ability. yeah, so the forum works like a filter. It's perfectly okay, uh, as I said, as long as it's and uh, as it ends up in an issue on our web website, it's fine. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah, it was too early. <laughs> Yes, of course. This is a, uh, another good advice. Yes. At least twice a week we have to close a Duplicate uh, reports. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's a usual practice. I mean, you, uh, it's, uh, you just, uh, there is a good search facility at GitHub, so you can search through the source code, through the bug reports. For, it's, a free, it's a free search where, where you type any phrase and it's, it will be found if it's there. So, yeah, please search before. Uh, creating a new ticket. Uh, okay, so let's talk about our future plans. Uh, as we already mentioned, we started our work on uh, QT5 and this is going to be our next big project. And it's uh, quite obvious why we chose it uh, because, well, our, Q our current QT version is quite outdated and uh, many, if not all, uh, uh, applications using Qt have already migrated to Qt5, so we have to uh, to have older versions which are not supported anymore, and and so on. So it's very important to port Qt5 to OS2 because it will give us a lot of uh, new versions of new applications. Qt5 is a a uh, huge and very popular toolkit which is used by a lot, uh, by a, a, a big number of uh, applications to provide you the user interface, the graphical user interface. It's a toolkit to implement the graphical user interface. Uh, 
Uh, so as long as we have Qt5 ported, we will have a lot of uh, applications updated and we will also have uh, some new applications. For example, uh, Qt5 uh, uh, contains a lot of uh, interesting modules that they added since uh, Qt4 and one of them is the new web engine. A web engine is a, a piece of, of software your application uses to display web pages, to display web content. And in Qt uh, version 5, they switched to the Chromium web engine. And Chromium web engine is what uh, Chrome uses. Uh, Chrome is, the, I think, is the, now the topmost uh, browser, which is, well, I don't know if it's Internet Explorer is still there, but uh, I don't remember, I don't remember the numbers, but uh, at least uh, Chrome is, m is more popular than Firefox nowadays. It's a browser from Google, which is used a lot. And it has quite a good support. <clears throat> I mean, there are a lot of people at Google working at it, and it has a modern code base. It's relatively easy to port. It's l relatively easy to maintain because its code uh, is written uh, not that long time ago, and it's, uh, it, it uh, meets all the current standards and looks nice and is easy to read and easy to support. So while porting Qt5, uh, we will also port this uh, Chromium engine to OS2. And this will open a way to run a number of browsers, Qt5 based browsers on uh, OS2. And we will uh, choose uh, uh, the best one among them and then we will work on it specifically. So there will be a Qt5 based browser which will be run by the Chromium engine. Yes? Uh, it was before they switched to Chromium. Now it's different. It was uh, first uh, in Qt5 they used uh, the WebKit engine. The WebKit in engine is uh, developed, developed by op Apple and it's the base for their Safari browser. And Qt, uh, at, f at first they used this uh, engine and it's, it's even still in Qt4 where we also have it. but. In Qt5, they switched to Chromium because uh, the web engine uh, is a bit uh, more uh, more limited than uh, Chromium. Chromium is, is has better support for current HTML5 and CSS standards and so on. And uh, uh, this also means that at some point we might even port Chrome to us too because we will already have the engine ported within our Qt, uh, Qt5 work. So we might also decide to port Chrome. And this uh, will be quite nice, I think, to have Chrome for OS2, no doubt about that. Uh, also, there is a plan to uh, refresh our Open GDK port because the current version is version six and it's a bit outdated as well. Many Java applications require Open GDK seven, right? Or even eight, and we need to updated too. The, it's, our, it's in our to-do list, at least. Also, uh, we are going to release a tool uh, that will allow you to uh, load the executables and the DLLs high. And again, maybe Sylvan will uh, tell you a bit more about this tool right now. Yes, it's not, it's not ready. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's... Uh, <laughs> Go and do it. Yes, the, <clears throat> the idea, yeah, the idea of this tool is uh, that it should be very simple for the end user to uh, switch uh, particular DLL or uh, the whole application to be loaded to the into the high memory. It should be, it should be very easy, and we have an idea of using our RPM uh, infrastructure for that. This uh, uh, package installer thingy which uh, some of you may still not like, but as we mentioned it everywhere, it's the only way to go. I mean, this uh, automated uh, package installer from Linux called RPM. And there is a, a GUI for it in Arca OS called N a -N -P -M. Yes, and you can use it uh, to install all, all you need. And uh, once we 
release this tool, you will be able to use an ANPM as well uh, to, uh, to uh, convert your application to, to get loaded high. It, was ver it will be very, uh, very simple. You will just add a special prefix to the package name and it will get uh, converted to a version that gets loaded high. Uh, it's a small tool, I think we will release it quite soon. Uh, then we have an idea uh, to uh, provide a special extension to our Libc extension library. Uh, so we <laughs> it, it will be an extension to an extension. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the thing is that the, um, I uh, need to explain it a, a bit uh, in detail here. Libc is the basic library which is used by all uh, software which is based uh, on C and C++. And uh, I think everybody knows Knut Osmundsen. This is the guy who has been working on a decent QC, uh, Libc uh, uh, version for OS2 for many years. But the problem is that he currently stopped uh, his OS2 activity almost completely. So uh, the Libc project uh, doesn't, almost doesn't get any updates. So we have to <coughs> fix uh, problems we, which we need uh, to fix there on our own and instead of uh, uh, no I need to go back uh, I think it's done like that okay and instead of uh, extending uh, Lipsy for some there are some technical reasons uh, limitations we had to introduce uh, um, an extension to Lipsy which we call Lipsy X there is a special DLL which is also install installed with, with almost all, all, all software we currently release and it contains, it provides some extensions to Libc. And we are going to implement some feature in there which will let uh, modern applications use memory above uh, four gigabytes. Uh, as far as you know, well, OS2 is a 30-bit operating system, so uh, four gigabytes is the theoretical maximum your application may use for its needs uh, in the 32-bit world. But modern computers uh, usually have more than four gigabytes <coughs> of memory. And uh, in order for the applications to use this memory on OS2, we need some special tricks because it's, it's simply impossible to do it straight away. And we need a special uh, workaround for that. And you probably know that there is a bootloader called QS init. Uh, which allows you to you to which already allows you to use some uh, memory above four gigabytes for things like uh, the RAM disk and uh, something like that. But it's mem this memory is not available to the applications now uh, nowadays. And our plan is to provide uh, uh, some uh, support for uh, for it in our Libsy uh, extension library. Of course, uh, it, it will, it will require, the thing, uh, what you should understand here is that you cannot uh, implement this in a seamless way so that any application would be able to use this memory. This is simply impossible on OS2 and there are technical reasons making this impossible. So in order to use this uh, memory, you have to modify the application. For example, for example if it's Firefox or if it's Qt5, there needs to be uh, some special things need to be done in this software and you remember DOS, right? Everyone remembers DOS. And there was a thing called EMM, Extended Memory Man Manage Manager. So this will be something like that uh, in OS2. Well, it's uh, basically the same idea. Uh, DOS was 16-bit. 16-bit uh, operating system and the memory uh, be, uh, beyond uh, six, uh, 640 kilobytes were not available, was not available to the application. So you had to use uh, the, the, uh, this extended memory manager in order to access it. The same thing needs to be done when uh, there is a border between 32-bit world and 46-bit uh, world. So th this is what we are uh, also going to do. Yeah, of course, there will be an API for that in this uh, libcx library, so uh, so that uh, any applications will be able to uh, any application will be able to use it for its n its own needs. But I guess you don't have to start running something like NetMaker with DOS to configure extension. 
<laughs> no, 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 of course, uh, it will be all transparent from this point of view. You will have to have this QS anything and you will be basically good to go if you use this API from this uh, libc extension library. Okay, next slide. So you need to, to uh. move separate versions of your programs to use uh, memory above the four gigabytes? Yes. No, no, I, I mean, if, if for whatever reason my programs, it's a, uh, my programs are running on a machine that has not access to, to memory Ah, you mean, uh, uh, of course, the, no, 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 the same program uh, will be able, uh, will be usable on, on, any, on any machine, yeah, regardless of it, it, if it has this uh, QS init support or not, it's, uh, it's irrelevant, of course, it will be uh, adopting it, uh, to it at runtime. Uh, uh, so, uh, also we will continue uh, active support uh, to our, uh, for our RPM infrastructure which allows you to install all these packages and uh, believe me it's, it's a quite a bit of work because you need a lot to port a lot of tools for that and you need to keep them current to go on. This, uh, for example, this includes Python. Python is used uh, in, in a tool called YAM, which you use to install packages from co the command line. And it, it's used in many other places. Uh, so we have to port uh, Python as well to have all, all this up and running. And we uh, will, of course, continue active support uh, for all uh, the tools and the libraries you need to develop OS2 software, like the GCC compiler, like the Whatcom linker, and all the, uh, the libraries you need. Uh, now, uh, which we will, uh, now about uh, a few words about things that which we are not uh, planning uh, to do currently at least. We are not planning to continue our Firefox development and there are reasons for that. Uh, the main reason is that uh, uh, Mozilla switched to a new language uh, called Rust in Firefox v version 57 and up. And Rust is a, a, again a project of its own. It's a it's a thing. It's a compu It's a compiler. It's a comp it's, a, it's something like uh, GCC. Uh, and this project is quite big, uh, quite big actually. And uh, well, it may take a year to to have a running version of this uh, compiler uh, uh, on OS two. So uh, this is uh, the main reason why we are not going to support Firefox anymore. So the last uh, supported version. Uh, 45.9.0, which is released, uh, which was released uh, a week ago. Uh, we will, of course, uh, do some hot fixes if they are required, uh, if we find some uh, unexpected bugs and so on. But we don't plan to release a newer version on Fi of Firefox, at least not in the next few years. And then we will see, maybe one day we will get back to it. And of course, we will never do any uh, Adobe Flash release anymore for obvious reasons, because Adobe uh, um, stopped uh, supporting it uh, last year, as you, uh, as you probably know, and th there is just no sense in order to spend any resources <coughs> on it. And, uh, actually, it requires quite a bit of time because, well, uh, it's, ve it's a very complicated piece of software and I'm really happy that it has gone because it would uh, uh, drain your battery, uh, the battery of your laptop if you use uh, uh, it on your laptop and uh, you, it would consume a lot of memory, it would make your browser very slow and it would crash it all uh, over and over again. So it's a good thing that, has, has, that it has gone. So in spite of what your mother said, procrastination sometimes has advantages. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So there will be no Adobe Flash uh, support. Um, I think th that's all with my slides. Uh, thank you for, for listening to me. And if you have any questions, it's, it's the good time to ask them now. Okay then, thank you. Thank you very much. Please contribute. Please write bug reports. Now and then we will have a lot of interesting things going on in the OS2 world.